for a Well, hello! Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video, and welcome to the Gridiron. And before I get started, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you! If you can maybe give this video a thumbs up, or possibly leave a comment below, or maybe even share this video, it would mean so much to me. But at least anyway, just thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you! Well, <laughs> Um, the Isaiah Wilson Project is <whistles> no moss. I guess the Giants have just had enough of them. Uh, they finally cut them from the, the practice squad. <laughs> and uh, so apparently he's been just, well, just like trying to read online. Apparently he's been testing the patience of the coaches. I think it was here, I think it was September 30th. You know, so I mean, you got, you know, all of October, all of November, all of December, you know, we're a couple of days, you know, she's been here for over three months. So apparently, um, three months uh, is not a lot more bad than good. Uh, one thing, I mean, you know, one of the bad things was he came in out of shape. Now, he, he, you know, he, he wrote and he, like, wanted another chance. Can I have another chance? And, you know, and the Giants gave him another chance. And then he came in, and he, he was overweight. But apparently, you know, he was he, he dropped some weight for, you know, for the, the reports I've been reading. So, you know, he was doing some good there. But apparently behind the scenes, uh, you know, he's just been doing a lot of bad things. Uh, now, as I said, he, he, he arrived well out of shape. Uh, you know, we, but, you know, he was working his way down, where, you know, dropping some weight. I don't know what he came in at, but, I mean, the dude is he's like 6'7". I mean, he's just huge. He looks like a brick wall. I mean, my God. It, it would, it's just such a shame because, I mean, somebody with that potential, um, maybe what they, what could have, you know, what could have been. But uh, apparently, uh, he, um, I guess he's got the DeAndre Baker kind of thing going on there. He's falling asleep in meetings. I mean, you know, I, you know, I don't know about you, but you know, I mean, I, mean, I think it's like ninety-two hundred dollars he makes a week on the practice squad. I mean, I mean, it's like thirty-seven thousand dollars. I mean, it's like, are you, are you freaking serious? Thirty-seven thousand dollars a month. So, it's thirty-seven thousand. So he made about $111,000, somewhere around $110,000, I mean, in three months. He came on. And he's falling asleep in meetings and all and everything. I mean, um, Rob Sale obviously said, you know, <laughs> was not talking highly about him. He said he needed to be more dependable. He, he uh, Rob Sale raved about Andrew Thomas. He said, Andrew Thomas, dependable. You, 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 coaches can count on him. Teammates can count on him. Dependable. Now he didn't explain, you know, the great detail and all about what that meant, but I guess he just wasn't that, uh, wasn't taking it very seriously. I mean, <laughs> very, very, you know. So uh, sadly, if this is it for him, you know, because you're only going to get so many strikes. Now, like somebody like Antonio Brown, who has some type of mental problem, some something, something's wrong up here. Um, he's a known commodity. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, you, you can, you, when you got the, ta the talent of an Antonio Brown, you know, people give you some chances. Well, dude, we put up with him for a month. You know, he might get us to the playoffs. And just show him, some, show him a little money and just, you know, I hope he doesn't go too crazy and we'll, we'll win a few games and we'll make the playoffs because look at the talent. You know what I mean? So teams will give him a chance, you know. Um, and the Buccaneers gave him a couple chances, and you know keep, he kept proving them wrong every time. You know, and look what happened this past Sunday. But with Isaiah Wilson, it's like he he doesn't have any. It, it, it's kind of like Joe Judge talking about you know we're building uh, you know a foundation and all of this stuff, and he's talking about all this stuff. Joe Judge, you need to have some credibility. You know what I mean, Joe? You need to have a few, a few wins in the pocket. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you know, at least have a winning record, 
or, you know, at least have a four or five game winning streak going into like you did last year. Yeah, I mean, you were six and ten. It's your first year, but you won five out of the last eight games. Right? That's good. That's impressive. And you think at the end, it, we're building a foundation. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, okay. All right. I can see that. Hey, dude, you won five out of the last eight. All right. Build that, baby. Build it. Yeah. I mean, this shit, you're like, you know, you just, you're an airplane crashing into the mountain, baby. I mean, you got nothing to stand on. I mean, it's like the same thing with Isaiah Wilson. I mean, you got, you know, I mean, how many chances you want people to give you? I mean, seriously. I mean, so I said, so if this is it for him. He has as many, he has more arrests, two than he, games that he's actually played in. He played in one game with the Titans. I think he had four, it was in it for four snaps. That that's all he had. It was his rookie season. <laughs> that was it. So so after he got um, drafted, he's been arrested two times and he's played in one game. I mean. Then he got traded, and the Dolphins traded for him. And the Dolphins just let him go after three days later. <laughs> it's his number one first-round pick. Pick it was 28 or 29 from the Titans. And they, they just let him go. Nah. <laughs> I mean, when he, I guess, I mean, there's a couple things where the writing was starting to be a kind of on the wall. I mean, because the Giants had just been totally depleted with their offensive line. It's absolutely unbelievable. You know, I mean, with, with Billy Price, with the, the, you know, with his wife and all of that. You know, I mean, that, you know, it's, that's horrible. And then the injuries and all. Um, but a couple weeks ago, you know, when he got elevated against the Eagles, and he was actually on a 53-man roster. He was a uniform and everything. He was on a side. He was the only one that didn't get in, in for one snap. Everybody else played but him. Then this past weekend, they, 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 I mean, they had guys, they, they needed, they needed guys, you know, on the offensive line in the worst way. And what did they do? They wound up keeping him on the practice squad, and they wound up bringing up Derek Kelly the second from Florida State. He got his undrafted free agent from Florida State in 2019. So his three, third year, where I looked, 2019, he didn't have any snaps. Last year for New Orleans, he had, was in, I think, on 16 snaps. And this past weekend against the Bears, he got in on 18 snaps. It was at the guard, left guard. Now, Isaiah Wilson, apparently they, they were training him at tackle, you know, because that's what he was in college. But they also brought him in, too, you know, at, uh, at guard, tried him out at guard, too. So, I mean, he's, he's been... Bouncing back and forth, you know, on the practice squad with tackle and guard. So you figure, right? I mean, if, if he had any any hope at all, like this past weekend against the Bears, you know, they could have brought him up and maybe threw him in there at guard. Right? But no, they, they brought in Derek Kelly the second. Andre at the from 2019. They, they put him in there for 18 snaps. They did all right. They you know, did, did decent. But I mean, I mean, so the writing's just got to be on, how to stop being on the wall when, you, when they're leaving you on the practice squad and they're, and they're bringing up other guys. Whew. Now, I don't know what the heck it is. I mean, I mean, I don't mean, just hanging out with the wrong people or maybe just, maybe just lost, lost his love for football. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I'm saying, I mean, if, if, if you don't want to play football, just say something, just, you know, leave. I mean, it's just not for everybody, you know. Um, he, he just uh, not taking it seriously. I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's just if there's an atmosphere for him, this is it. He's. We got. I mean, <laughs> this this weekend we're gonna have Jake Fromm, the quarterback. He was on an offensive line with Andrew Thomas, <laughs> right? He's on. He, Andrew Thomas was the left tackle of Georgia. Jake Fromm was the quarterback of Georgia. Isaiah Wilson was the right tackle. We got other guys. You know, on the defense, our defense from Georgia. I mean, this is the perfect place. We got a weak offensive line. We could use you. I got all these guys from Georgia there. I mean, this is this is like he's he he he's grown up in this area in the New York area. I mean, this is perfect for him. I mean, if he's not making it here, I don't know where the heck he's going to make it at. 
I don't know who else is going to give him, a, give him another chance. I mean, I don't know if he need, just needs a kick in the ass. I mean, or what? But I mean, it won't be with the Giants anymore. I mean, if he, if he ever gets another, you know, chance. I mean, it's a, I, don't, I don't know what his problem is, but, you know, sadly, the you know, Giants washed their hands off him, so. <laughs> oh, well. But now we got... <laughs> Now the Mike Glenn exper experience is over with because he apparently he hurt his uh, left uh, wrist and he needs, he needs he needs surgery so he's on the IR so he, that's another body added to the IR I think we're up to thirty one now uh, thirty one or thirty <laughs> thirty two I mean my God it's it's unbelievable absolutely unbelievable so um, you have got uh, and we got uh, Lewerke, Brian Lewerke will be the backup. So the Giants, eh, so we've got Mike Lennon, who, who's no no longer on the team. Then we got um, Daniel Jones, is that's our first <laughs> our first string and second string quarterback are no longer. Now we're now we're going to third and fourth string. We're going to finish this finish the season with third and fourth string quarterbacks on the field. Unbelievable, uh, Glenn, <laughs> Glennon. <laughs> He didn't really have a fantastic season. I'm pretty sure this might be his, his first and last season with the Giants. Uh, he, he, he completed 90 out of 167. He completed 53.9% of his passes uh, for 790 yards. So, yeah, right. he had four touchdowns, but he had 10 interceptions, though. And he was sacked nine times. Whew. Now... Fromm did a nice job in his first game in that one drive against the Cowboys. It was like a 13-play drive. Um, he was 6 out of 12 for 82 yards. They didn't get any points. They could have gotten points if they needed them. But, I mean, they, it was at the end of the game. They needed a touchdown. So, on fourth down, when they were inside the 10, they had to go for a touchdown. They couldn't kick a field goal. But he did move them down the field. I mean, he had some nice nice little passes. He had a, a, a nice touch pass to... Um, to Kenny Galladay, he had another nice pass to Kenny Galladay down the side. Or Kenny Gall, I don't know where the frick the flag was at. If Kenny Galladay was not being held, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the hell was going on. I mean, that was unbelievable. I mean, I don't know if the Cowboys were supposed to win that game, so just to keep up the penalty flag in the pockets or something. I don't. Know what, I mean, that was unbelievable. But anyway, it was a nice pass. Kenny Galladay went up and got it. First pass, a little, little dump off over the middle to uh, Shepard. Shepard caught another one over the middle. Got hit really hard, but held on to it. Then there was another one. I think he hit Shepard. It looked like he hit him in the chest, and, it, and he just dropped the ball. He hit a little check down to uh, Saquon on one of them. Um, he, hit, he hit Darius Slayton over to the left. But it looked like he was just, like, dropped back to pass. Like he was just kind of staring. <laughs> you know, that's where I'm going. Hey, Dallas. Darius Slayton, that's where I'm going. So it looked like he was a little staring down a little bit there. But it was a nice pass, you know, he moved them down the field. But, I mean, Dallas also was kind of, you know, more willing just to tackle the guys, keep them in balance, keep the clock running. But, you know, once they got down inside the 10-yard line, you know, things tightened up. Um, he, he had four completions. Then on the last one, he, he just he threw something really fast to Farrell Cooper. I don't even think he was even looking because they, they, like, blitzed everybody. You know, but... Um, so, I mean, it was, it was uh, all right, you know, uh, acceptable, you know. But then against the Eagles, you know, uh, <laughs> you know it's kind of tough. Uh, well, I, I guess, I guess, I guess, Mike Lennon's game against the Bears was worse because he had minus ten yards passing. Um, but uh, against the Eagles, I mean, from was six out of seventeen for twenty-five yards. He had one interception. Um, you know, Giants scored three points on his eight possessions. He got sacked two times. You know, so it wasn't it wasn't really pretty against the Eagles. Um, so far this year, he's twelve out of twenty nine for one hundred and seven yards. He has one interception. He's completing forty one percent of his passes. Who God? He's he's his uh, yards per pass attempt three point six nine yards per pass attempt. You, you like it at least seven, seven and a half. So you want to double of what he has. So that's not very good. Now, I said on, on the side of that, we've got Brian Lewerke. All right? So he, he'll be the backup. Oh, my God. Now, he's never played in an NFL game. Uh, he's four years at Michigan State. Not really phenomenal numbers. He completed 57.7% of his passes 
8,293 yards, but that but that's in four years. You know, he played all four years. He wasn't the starter for all four years, but, you know, he has 47 touchdown passes, but he has 32 interceptions. He only averaged 6.6 .6 yards per pass attempt, which is not really that phenomenal. So regardless of how you look at it, uh, I guess we've got to be lucky and happy that Chase Young isn't playing because he, he'd be just licking his chops. <laughs> Man, I can't wait to sack those eight. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be difficult. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough game. I mean, for for Jake or you know whoever our quarterback is in there, it's gonna be tough because Washington will be they'll be fired up on defense. So, but uh, <laughs> thank goodness, guys, one more game. Speaking of games, you got the schedule came out. Well, not the schedule, the the, the opponents who came out for the twenty twenty two schedule. Now this this year it's it's. 2021, we had nine away games, and we got eight home games. Now, next year it'll be different. Next year we're going to have eight away games. We got, well, obviously we're playing Dallas, Philly, and Washington football team. But next year we're going to be playing in Lambeau Field against the Packers. This is the first trip to Lambeau Field since the 2016 playoff games when we got our asses handed to us after that boat ride photograph. Hey, hey, we're going to playoffs. Don't worry about the Packers. Now, let's go. Let's go take a boat trip. Let's go relax, chill out. We're going, we're going to kick the crap out of Packers. We got this. We're going to play off, baby. We're going to win the Super Bowl. What do we got to worry about the Packers for? Let's go. To, let's go on a boat trip and start taking some photos and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're also going to go play in Jacksonville. Play in Minnesota. Uh, going to play tennis in Tennessee, and then we're going to play Seattle. With or without Russell Wilson, I have to wait and see. Same thing with Green Bay. We're gonna be playing in Green Bay, maybe with or without Aaron Rodgers. Hmm, very interesting. Then our, our nine home games. Obviously, we got Dallas, we got Philly, we got the Washington Football Team. Then we're gonna home. We're gonna play Chicago for like seems like the thirteen hundred and fifty second season in a row. Um, then we got playing Detroit. We gotta play Houston. We gotta play Indianapolis at home, and we gotta play Carolina at home once again. So we got some winnable. I mean, I, I hate saying winnable games, but Detroit, Houston, Carolina, Chicago is not that. You know, it's, right? Jacksonville we're playing. So I mean, there's some weakish opponents, shall we say? The Giants will be weak too. So, but anyway, anyway, what we don't know is the ninth opponent for the Giants the home. It's going to come down to this weekend. Whoever we're playing the NFC, uh, the AFC, I guess the North. So whoever finishes in last place in the AFC North is who we're going to want to play in now. He got Cincinnati is playing Cleveland. Then we either they're going to play Cleveland or we're going to play Baltimore. Whoever plays, whoever winds up in last place between Cleveland and Baltimore, that's who we're going to want to play. In. We'll be playing them at home. Now if um, Pittsburgh is playing in Baltimore. Baltimore can use this, and Baltimore Pittsburgh is a huge game for them because both of them want to make the playoffs. A huge game. Whoever loses is out of the, out of the playoff race, period. So, but whoever wins, I, I don't think they're guaranteed, but they got a shot to make the playoffs. So it's a huge, huge game. I can't wait to watch it. Oh, I got Direct TV Sunday ticket. Oh, Sunday package. Oh man, can't wait to watch this game. But anyway, if Baltimore wins, they'll be 9-8. and eight. And regardless of what the Browns do, the Baltimore Ravens will be in third place. Or 9-8. and eight. Yeah, no, they'll be in second place. Yeah, so if Baltimore wins, Cleveland will be in last place no matter what. But if Cleveland wins and Baltimore loses, I think Baltimore will be in last place. And we're going to have to wind up playing Baltimore. I don't, I don't, I, I don't. Baltimore, I mean, with Lamar Jackson, and if the Ravens were healthy, the Ravens are an unbelievable team. So that's not that's not much. I mean, that, that's that's really that's really bad for the Giants. So hopefully the Browns will wind up uh, losing, and hopefully they'll be in last place, and will come and they'll come play the Giants. I mean, the Browns are good too, but with a healthy Lamar Jackson and a healthy Baltimore Ravens team, the Baltimore Ravens are a much better team, I think, than, than the Browns are. So. So after this weekend, we'll find out if we're going to be playing Cleveland or if we're going to be playing Baltimore next year at home. And that'll be our ninth and final home home game. 
but uh, so that's that's the uh, the early schedule. Uh, the, the 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 times and dates and all won't come out until you know after the draft's over. But uh, that's that's a quick look at the schedule. As always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time any day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there and go Giants.